so this is a decoding superhuman first. We've got three people on the mic today. This is dangerous. And we're all in different areas due to lovely uh, current regulations. Uh, for those listening right now, this is the middle of this awesome uh, pandemic. But due to video conferencing, we can have some fun. So Alana, Ingrid, thank you for taking the time today. I would, you know, I just am looking forward to this conversation. Actually, Ingrid, today, uh, the, the two soul arrived at my house and I've already had one today. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, I for, that long, huh? I send it a while back. Wow. Well, customs are, are a joy yeah. right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if the Dutch customs authority is listening to this, thank you so much. But uh, <laughs> it was perfect timing. So I had one right before this and I'm energized and ready to rock. So let's, I, I just want to dive in with you guys. Uh, Alana, at first, I have to ask this question because uh, I have a man crush on Thomas Keller, as I've told you before. What is it like to work at French Laundry? Um, loaded question, but I think- a Loaded that... question. <laughs> we could have a whole hour discussion about that, mm. but I'll spare your listeners. Um, I think that you, I learned more in that experience than I've learned in any experience in my entire life, hands down. I mean, I, I call upon the strength that I gain there daily. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that. But I think that it's, you surrender to the fact that it will be your whole life. You will not have a life outside of, you know, the, the restaurant that you exist within. Um, and so you just have to find the lessons in everything. And I think that, um, you know, one thing you learn, for example, is like no detail is too small. And I think whether it's, he would always come by and come and grab like lint off the rug in the back of the storage warehouse. <laughs> Things were like, you and I would never think twice about bending over and picking up a piece of lint. But the reality is, you know, what you're presenting to people, it's not just what you present to them. It's the entire process of getting it to them. And nothing's mm -hmm. too small to overlook. Um, was a big thing. And then another piece that I pulled from that, that I try and pull from daily is like meeting expectations is never enough, especially, you know, when you're dealing with a customer and you're, when you're dealing with an experience, especially at a place where expectations are so high um, and people come in expecting the world is not enough to give them the world. You have to give them much, much more than that. And so I think, um, that's something I really am excited to try and do with our two soul community, not to sound too salesy, but like that's where my excitement comes from is by trying to exceed people's expectations and living in the pressure cooker of what the French laundry is and the beauty and the special place that it is uh, really stays with you for mm -hmm. forever. I, I'd hope I'd imagine. So, so that, that ability to perform. That's to find man crush. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sign off uh, on that. That's yeah. a conservative conversation. I'll give us the juicy details. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll take that offline. Oh, we, can have, we can have all the juicy details offline. Uh, Ingrid, autoimmune conditions. These seem to become more and more popular for all the wrong reasons, right? People are getting them at rapid rates. And I know you've had some experience with it. If you're willing to share, yeah. I'd love to talk about what your experience was with Crohn's disease, because I, I do think this all kind of files into this story, but what was that like? And for the, if you don't mind just explaining it to people. It, it was something, I mean, I was young when I started getting uh, symptoms of Crohn's disease and mm -hmm. that to me, it was at the time it was very taboo because I wasn't, I wasn't very open about my life back then. And so I didn't want to be sharing with the world like, oh, I'm having these issues. I'm having, you know, bloody stools. Hey, what do you do about that? I, I was really, really embarrassed about that, about all the symptoms that I was having. And so I was hiding it for a long time. I wasn't, I didn't go to the doctor. I, uh, but I, the little symptoms started and it's something, when you get an autoimmune disease, it's something that is not going to hit you right on your face. The right. body is always telling you something since the beginning. There's always, it's always telling you a clue. 
the the problem is that we're not some of us are not connected to our body mm -hmm. and so when you have i think the first symptom is lack of energy lack of sleep uh little subtlety in your body and so um when there is a uh and then we don't pay attention because we think it's related to work. We think it's related to everyday stress. We think it's related to, uh, oh, well, I have children. It's just my children are giving me more stress than people. And so we put all the symptoms under the carpet and we start shoving everything under the carpet. So it's not until the end when your body's like, you know what? I told you, I gave you all the symptoms. I gave you all these clues. You're not listening to me. Like, this is what I have to do. Or, this is what's happening. And so I, you know, um, all those symptoms were there, the low energy, lack of sleep, um, feeling bloated, uh, feeling, uh, you know, certain things will upset my stomach until um, it started getting worse and worse and worse. And if you have Crohn's, if you have colitis, if you have any IBS issues, you know that um, it's just something that you probably have to deal with every single day. Sometimes it would stop me from going to social gatherings or, or mm -hmm. my friends or hanging out with people because my stomach, my stomach pains were so bad that I just didn't want to leave the house. And so I went with long periods of time without leaving the house, without talking to people, without talking to friends, because sometimes people would invite me to their birthday party and be like, well, yeah, probably my stomach's going to hurt. Like, I'm not going to go. And so, and it's also uh, going to restaurants, going to, um, I mean, every time I ate, it, it was, it's like, it's like swallowing a Brillo pad. Like yeah. you would, I feel it in my stomach. And so um, from there, uh, you start getting depression. That's another one. That's another symptom, depression. And I was in huge denial because I always thought, I had the idea that people with depression would not leave their bed. And I was out, I was, uh, you know, still, um, um, you know, doing my everyday things. I wasn't necessarily in bed, but I only associated depression with people that just can't get out of bed and need, uh, uh, um, I don't know, pharmaceuticals in order to be able to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. But I had that. I was in such denial. And that was around the time that I had my son. And so having a baby and having Crohn's pushed me into postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And so that's another topic, but it's also so taboo because how do you tell people, hey, I can't connect with my child or I don't have a connection with my, my, my newborn. And so it's, that's another subject, but it's also, there's a lot of taboos that, that, that people don't really talk about. And I feel like it's so important to be able to talk about and what you feel or the changes that are happening in your body. Talk to other people because a lot of people are going to relate. As soon as I started talking about my Crohn's experience and, and what happened to me, I learned that the majority of my friends are having or have had gut issues. Yeah. It's very common. It's very, very common. And I didn't, you know, because I was hiding at it and I wasn't, able to relate to other people but I wish I would have spoken up sooner and I would have talked to other people about it mm -hmm. and so that's part of my journey with that mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, let's I want to eventually come full circle here but when it came to fixing it because a, a very popular thing right now for any autoimmune condition is really carnivore diets, right? Mm -hmm. How did you look at your own diet and how did you start to like piece together what you could actually eat and how did that actually lead to healing of your Crohn's? So it's also being, getting into health and wellness is extremely intimidating. Mm -hmm. If you don't know anything about health or wellness, you're going to look at a, 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 a trainer or you're going to like, you're going to look at someone that's super fit and you're going to be like, you are from another planet. Like, how did you figure that out? Like, you're the smartest person on earth. Like, how did you figure out how to get your body to that level? And how did you figure out what to eat? And you must be very, uh, um, uh, I don't know, organized with your, with your eating. And I just saw it as very, 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 um, very hard to achieve. Something that I was not going to be able to do now if I started today. Because 
I didn't know what I, I mean. And I went online and I searched and so many, there's so many diets. There's always a new diet. Yeah. Always a new diet. There's always a new uh, a blog popping up. There's always someone talking about it. Someone, you should eat this, don't eat that, become vegan, do this. It's so confusing. And to me, it was very intimidating that I put it in the back burner for a long time. I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll research it. I'll, I'll research it later. I'll research it later. I'll just continue to eat. Because whatever I was eating was comfortable. I was comfortable with. That's something that I grew up with. It mm-hmm. starts with your childhood, right? And how your parents lead you toward, to having a, a, or teach you about wellness and teach you about health and teach you about, you know. I was, I learned all my recipes from my mother. And mm-hmm. being Mexican and cooking Mexican food, it's, it's, we all know that Mexican food is not the healthiest. And, <laughs> and being, learning from my mom, just being, my mom was always in the kitchen. She was cooking from scratch, but she was not cooking with very, now I know that what she was cooking with was extremely unhealthy. And so um, starting with vegetable oil, she loved using canola, canola, canola oil and she loved reusing canola oil. So after it would, she would fry something, she would put it back in, in, in the, in the plastic bottle mm-hmm. and then reuse it over and over and over again. Anyway, so that's mm-hmm. something that happened to my mom. <laughs> and, uh, um, and so I had to unlearn that. So a lot of, uh, of the, 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 uh, the journey to health and wellness is unlearning what you have learned. Mm-hmm. And that's extremely difficult. And so um, to me, when I saw someone healthy, it's like, what are they eating? Like lettuce and tomatoes sounds extremely boring. I don't want to eat just lettuce and tomatoes. <laughs> and so, um, but it got to the point that, that um, I couldn't put it in the back burner. And it got to the point that my Crohn's got so bad that I was going in and out of surgeries. Wow. It got to the point that I was having my appendix uh, 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 had, had to be removed. I had a, a double sur- surgery on, on my intestines. I had, uh, uh, I had a, when I was pregnant, I had a heterotopic pregnancy, meaning that, that my intestines were so inflamed that it was pushing my, my, um, it was pushing my fallopian tube. And so when it pushed my fallopian tube, uh, I was starting with twins. So when it pushed my fallopian tube, one of the twins couldn't make it out of the fallopian tube. So mm-hmm. it got stuck in there. So that's part of what happened with my heterotopic pregnancy. So there was so much inflammation. And then if you have, once, once I hit that rock bottom, I, start, I was starting to contemplate suicide. It's, it's my mind became so toxic that everything that I was thinking, I just thought about my life. It was not worth it to live in pain. Life was not worth it. I was making everybody miserable. That's what I was thinking. Like my mind was so full of toxins. And so suicide was something that was much easier to do than to start a new, a new uh, life that I didn't know how. And so I told myself it was so cliche, but it was January. It was the beginning of 2017. And I told myself, if I don't do anything right now, and try to change my, my health and try to change my fitness, I'm probably going to end up writing a suicide note to my family. And so that's the moment where, okay, this is where I have to do something. And so I hired a trainer, a personal trainer, and this personal trainer would come over to my house every single day. And uh, I mean, that was a lot of money to pay a personal trainer to come to your yeah. house every day. And so I said, okay, well, if I'm going to be spending a lot of money on training, might as well uh, start right now researching uh, health. They both go hand in hand and I have to do something now. And so I started researching um, and I started researching nutrition, other nutritionists, started uh, learning uh, uh, Chinese medicine. I went, I went really deep into Chinese medicine, Ayurveda medicine. I went deep into Aztec medicine. And um, I realized that there's, there's, there's a lot of common denominators in that. And the common denominators are uh, the nutrition and 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 the, the different thing that this, the different things that your body are that the, your body is, that your body is affected with. So there is five things that I saw in 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 uh, in, in those three medicine, and I saw uh, inflammation. That's one cause. 
Uh, another cause is oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. Another one is uh, um, another one is uh, low on energy. That's that's a big one. And cognitive decline. And a third one, uh, a fifth one is uh, gut dysbiosis. Mm -hmm. And so I was I, when I saw those five, I, I thought to myself, well, that's that's that those are the root cause of of my my inflammation and my 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 my, my Crohn's. Mm -hmm. the, those are the five things that are creating what I have right now. How do I tackle those five? Yeah. And um, I went on, uh, uh, I went to research and I started researching, okay, well, there is certain superfoods, there's certain medicines that the Chinese, Chinese medicine uses, like medicinal mushrooms. Mm -hmm. They have been for over 2000 years. There's certain things in Ayurveda that have been proven and used for thousands of years, which is turmeric, and ginger, and other things to lower inflammation. Uh, there's also other things in, 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 in there that uh, in Aztec medicine, they used a lot of uh, uh, antioxidants, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, polyphenols, that's what they use. Um, and so where can I find those? And uh, where can I find these amazing superfoods? And uh, what are the constituents? I went deeper into that. What are the constituents of each of these superfoods? Wow. And what's in them? What's making them uh, uh, become an anti-inflammatory? What's making reishi mushroom become, uh, become a powerful uh, immune system regulator and a powerful uh, anti-inflammatory and an adaptogen? What is it about that? And so I started going down, digging the rabbit hole and breaking each one of those superfoods into, okay, these are the constituents. These are the enzymes, polysaccharides, the polyphenols. There's uh, certain things that, uh, and then if you start looking up, okay, so Rishi has polysaccharides, great. Let's, look, let's go to NBCI and let's go to PubMed and find out what's, what's, what, what's, what medical journals have shown that polysaccharides help with inflammation or polysaccharides help with uh, uh, um, increasing the, the natural killer cells in, this, in, in, in the body. Mm -hmm. And I found a ton of information. Once you start breaking down these constituents and then uh, uh, looking for med med the medicinal uh, the, the journals, we start finding a world of information that, you know, there has been studies shown that yes, in fact, you know, the, the polysaccharides in the Rishi are able to boost the natural killer cells, white blood cells, the lymphocytes. And so and there's results showing that, you know, it, it helps with people that have cancer. So it's an anti-cancer, antiviral as well, antibacterial. And so I became fascinated with breaking down each of the superfoods. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I became fascinated with the fact that when you mix an enzyme, for example, maca. Maca has an enzyme. If you mix maca, the enzyme of maca, with, uh, with chaga, super oxide desmutase, they boost each other's properties. That means that the uh, SODs in the, in the chaga will be uh, boosted with the, with the enzyme in maca. So, they work so it's like one, one plus one equals four kind of equation. Yeah, so it's like a, it's like a synergistic, synergistic Effect that was happening with the superfoods, and then I'm, and then I started to realize, whoa, okay, maca and chaga work together. But what if I add sesame seeds? What what's in sesame seeds? I found that there's a type of fiber in sesame seeds that will boost maca, and so it's it's sort of like uh, once I started adding, making a jenga puzzle in in my formulations because I started making um, once I uh, found superfoods, I started making formulations for myself out of desperation. Mm -hmm. And so each of, of uh, I, I was tackling my, the, the, the five, you know, I was first tackling, tackling inflammation. And so how do I make uh, 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 something that I could have in the mornings? I don't care what it is, but something nutrient dense that I could, that could help me tackle inflammation. And so I started putting a Jenga puzzles with all the superfoods and, um, and, uh, based on each of their constituents and their synergistic effects. And so I started making, I don't know, I have maybe like 10 formulations for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's for me, inflammation. Okay, now I'm gonna make one for my fogginess. I have so, so much fog going on in my brain. And so I started looking for superfoods that would help, that were known to help with, with uh, 
cognitive decline. One of them was Lion's Mane, which is yeah. the most known to boost the acetylcholine in your brain. And acetylcholine is, is a, a neurotransmitter that is it's associated with memory and, and with uh, also digestion, by the way. Mm. Um, and so, um, great. Let's uh, let's make a formulation with uh, with uh, for, for for cognitive decline. Whoa. Okay. Great. What is making me age faster? Oh, oxidative stress. Great. So uh, an accumulation of free radicals. What is? How do you how do you stop free radicals? And so then I made this uh, antioxidant longevity uh, uh, formulation. And so they became. They became smoothies for myself, um, and so I realized that because I couldn't eat any solid because of my gut issues, I realized that having uh, something that's already pre-digested, blended, mm -hmm. was going to be able to be absorbed very well in my body. And mm -hmm. so I was assisting my, 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 my gut into digesting, and, um, and um, I mean... It takes a lot of energy to digest your food. It's about 30% of your brain energy to digest. Mm -hmm. so, um, I saw results right away uh, within, I want to say within the first two weeks, I started seeing my energy uh, uh, increase. I started uh, uh, seeing less bloating and I kept going. I kept going with the smoothies. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Thing I want to say within a, uh, a month, I lost so much weight. I had lost, uh, I want to say like 15 pounds the first month. Wow. Wow. And then um, I started to see, uh, I, I was able to, to sleep mm -hmm. uh, better. And um, after, I want to say within four months, I mean, I will show you my before and after. You, you could see it. I was so inflamed. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, inflammation you could see on my face mm -hmm. uh, and you could see I had lost 30 pounds after that. Wow. People weren't recognizing me on the street. I have so much energy. I was a different person. My, uh, all of a sudden, and the only thing that I care about, I didn't care about losing weight. That's not, that wasn't my priority. That was a byproduct of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. The only thing I cared about really, and the reason why I wanted to change my lifestyle is because I wanted the energy to be able to play with my son and to be able mm -hmm. to connect with my son and to be able to have energy and so I realized ultimately that's what everyone needs to be able to chase their dreams and to go after what they what you want in life right you need energy to be able to create things so to be able to go out there and, 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 and socialize you need energy to be able to uh, um, chase your dreams and chase your your your, your ambitions Without energy, you're gonna, you're gonna be my old me, where I would just sit at home and, and just just look out the window and just be miserable. Yeah, especially right now when we're all on lockdown, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> well that you know I have I have a little tips about that. Um, <laughs> we'll come to that in a second, Alana. I would love to just hear because okay. French Laundry, one of the best restaurants arguably in the world, right? Um, and would like to just hear how you decided, like, what was the thought process that went from, hey, I'm working in this really three, I think it was three Michelin star, it may still be, uh, restaurant. How do you make that decision to just jump forward into the health industry from there? Because that's not an easy, like to walk away from something like that is not very easy to do. I think that if you look through my personal background, mm -hmm. the French laundry is more the wild card than the health world is. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in Los Angeles. It's, you know, beautiful produce year round. I was spoiled and... I studied at Berkeley and I ran a farmer's market on the campus and I mentored <laughs> the cutest kids, all these elementary school kids around Berkeley and how to, you know, grow your own tomatoes in the backyard and how to grow peas in the springtime and kind of hang them on the wires. And it was across the street from Chez Panisse. So there was always in my heart and I would spend summers working at farmer's markets in um, like Beverly Hills, working with chefs, working with chefs like Woking Puck, but, but more so on the produce side um, was always where my heart was. 
And after graduating, I moved back to Los Angeles and I started a nonprofit organization really in line with what I was, with what was in my heart, which was working with kids in East LA, um, Boyle Heights. It's a extremely difficult part of LA. It's, it's, um, people don't, I you mean, don't necessarily kids, go there if you go to LA, right? You definitely don't go there. I mean, mm. the first time I went, I was driven around by the LAPD in Bullet Proof Sam, shown wow. the different projects. I mean, but this is normal life for, for these kids and they're, you know, brought up in it and it's, it's survival. You don't really have an option to be part of it or not. But also these kids have no access. I mean, it's a, the worst food deserts. So they mm. have no access to farms. They have no access to produce. They've never seen the beach, quite frankly. It's an hour away. They've never had access to the beach. So um, when I moved back to LA, I started a nonprofit that brought the kids into farms, brought them to farmer's markets, brought them into restaurants, and really taught them how to eat healthy, how to get outside of their spaces, how to build you know, a cinder block vegetable garden in your backyard <laughs> because it's mm. possible. And it's sunny year round. You can grow anything here. You just kind of accidentally drop seeds and you'll grow food. And so you could find in the roundabouts kale growing and you can find artichokes growing. And like there was just, there was no awareness of this and there was no one teaching this and there was no one prioritizing it. So I really, that was really my passion when I came back here. And mm-hmm. so I saw that, um, here in LA, I had teamed up with a restaurant group, actually based in the US, but they had locations on, in California as well. And so I kind of worked with them on the restaurant side, bringing the kids in. And then I also took over a lot of the, uh, I developed local sourcing programs and menu development for them. So I'd say, look, I'm bringing the kids to this farm. Why are we buying from Cisco? <laughs> I won't say the name of the group, but nonetheless, mm-hmm. it was. It, it, there was a lot of incontinuity there. So I took over really the sourcing, the local sourcing, the logistics, um, and, and continued working with the kids in East LA and then opened a chapter in Harlem, New York as well, uh, because it was the same uh, unawareness, I think, and lack of access to healthy food and knowing what to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. And I learned the coolest things that are happening in farming. And there's rooftop gardens in Brooklyn that are bigger than you know that are massive that are bigger than some farms and there are uh if you go into queens there are these biodynamic farms with chickens and with cows and it's all connected and so it's again in their in the it's in our backyards we're just not brought to it and we don't know what to do with it and we just assume it doesn't matter um Mm -hmm. That was really my background was much more in food systems and education. Uh, After three years with that restaurant group, I thought, oh, why don't I work for, you know, the best, quote unquote, best restaurant, one of the top restaurants in the world, Mm -hmm. (laughs) semantics. But so that for me, the, the exciting part about that was just getting, frankly, getting out of LA for a little bit again um learning from a place where i could never learn what i learned there in los angeles Um, i could Mm. in new york in san francisco but los angeles doesn't at the time didn't even have the michelin ratings here wow really (laughs) out of michelin because we just didn't care i mean la is not about this it's about scene and so doesn't matter if your drink comes the wrong drink. It's just, you know, it's fine as long as <laughs> and as long as it's diet, not you know, full sugar. But nonetheless, so I moved up there and I worked in the farm up there in the culinary garden. I was studying wine, so for me that was really my passion. The service side was exciting to learn. Um, mm-hmm. As you said, it's a pressure cooker. But after a few years there um, and learning, seeing how, I don't, I don't want to get too philosophical, but seeing how unhappy people with means were mm-hmm. to 
these these other these children I had worked with that were the happiest campers in the world with nothing. Yeah. It was a little bit startling for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really wanted to reroute and go back to, okay, how can I help people learn about nutrition, easily consume something healthy um, and enjoy their lives and mm. I kind of landed with two soul. I, I want to say because I had, I had tried approaching health from the food service side. Okay. I had tried approaching health from helping teens out. That's fine. But nothing really stuck. Mm -hmm. It has to come from the household. It has to come from the parents and the family and the education. And I think with what we're trying to, with, what we're trying to do and with what I'm excited about now is, is more of a top down where we're targeting more the, the decision makers in the house to be the ones choosing health, choosing to, to implement certain lifestyles that will be beneficial to everyone else in the family. So that's why we kind of started with now I'm approaching it from, I think a different perspective than trying to go to the kids and then they go home, they have a dollar and they have to eat Carl's Jr. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's an awareness, but it's not that easy to adopt long term. Um, mm -hmm. like, and so that's, I'd say that's how I ended up back in health. Um, and yeah, the front, I mean, being in food service and hospitality is, you know, a humbling educational experience, but that was never my passion. Mm -hmm. Just, it's a bit carry though. So, you guys came together, as I understand it, Ingrid, you were, uh, I would just love to hear sort of the, the spark that launched the brand, so to speak, because Ingrid, I understand you were making these smoothies and the recipes that you came up with for energy. I would love, I think I have some of them <laughs> sitting right here, but I, I, I'm going to pick your brain on those in a little bit, but you were making these for other people. And then at what moment did you two connect and say like, Hey, let's do this together. Bam, let's go. Yeah. So that, you know, wraps around to what I was just saying that, um, so when I saw the results in making the smoothies for myself, I wanted to share them with everyone I knew, uh, all my friends. I was just forcing people into being healthy. I was, okay, I'm coming over to your house. I'm giving you a 30 day supply of what I just made for myself. And I wasn't thinking, I've never been a business person. I've always, I don't, I've never been, I've never chased money. I've always sort of created things uh, and really didn't, pursue money I'm so bad at it <laughs> but anyways so I was giving them for free I was just going around and uh, uh, giving it to people and based on their elements okay what's going on with you oh well I have low energy I have uh, you know, I'm stressed out okay say no more here you go 30 days and so it, it became a thing in Malibu and um, and one of those people was Alana's dad I went over to his house uh, gave him his thirty day, and he said, uh, "He's by the, by the way, he's a he's a, a brilliant, one of the top venture capitalists." And so, uh, when I finished making him the smoothies, he goes, "Have you ever thought about making them into a business?" And I said, "I wouldn't even know where to start. Like, mm -hmm. no, no." He's, "You should meet my daughter. She just came back from Napa, and she is she wants to start a business. But I feel he says I feel that you guys would complement each other." Um, and so we, me and Alana, uh, we had already met a couple of times before, but it wasn't, um, uh, we didn't connect per se when, uh, but when we connected for this, we sat down and, and it is sort of, to me, it made sense on the spot. I said, wow, this girl, she's, she's, she's very smart. She's very focused. She's very, um, very, uh, uh talented at what she she does and so um let's i i wanted to sort of marry her right on the spot but she uh uh, uh she had to uh you know she was already uh she was looking she was talking to other companies and i was like please choose me but anyways uh, <laughs> i came around and uh, um yeah that's uh 
that's what that's that's how we got connected. We started uh, we started Tussle to be able to um, help more people because I wasn't gonna do it on my I couldn't do it on my own. Just how many people mm-hmm. could I by myself just going to their houses versus if we start a company we could we could open up more doors and, and help more people and so yeah that's how it, that's how it started. I want to spend a moment on the ingredients because the package comes it's gorgeous by the way whoever did the packaging amazing. Um, Thank you. You guys spend a ton of time on ingredients. I know Ingrid, I've heard you talk about it before, but how do you go about sourcing these? Because there's some things in here which most people may not have heard of, but there are others like curcumin or turmeric that like the importance of sourcing high quality stuff is, is tantamount. And so if you don't mind just kind of walking through your sourcing process, because I know that's really, really important and core. The quality is core to what you guys do. Yeah, the quality was very, very important to us, especially because if I'm gonna tell you that uh, drinking the, the balanced smooth is gonna help with your gut, it better help with your gut and it better not have any impurities in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, better not have any heavy metals, it better not have any, uh, anything else in there. And, and so that's one of the things that, that it's, you know, when me and Elena got together, we told each other, we're never, ever, no matter what, we're never going to cut corners when it comes to ingredients. That's the most important thing that we need to, that's our, our core in the company. And so we, when it, when it came time to sourcing, it, it was an interesting journey in, in the sourcing part because we were looking for um, a co-packer or a, a, a manufacturer that could uh, help us uh, uh, put the, the smoothies together. And so we talked to so many of them and um, we learned very interesting facts about sourcing. For instance, uh, the FDA, once it's certified organic by a farm, you're not required to test for additional additional uh, uh, things like mold, that's not a requirement. You're not required to test for heavy metals because it's already organic, right? You're certified organic, you're good to go. And so you're not required to test for anything else. Anything else that you wanna test for is gonna cost you money. It's gonna cost the company money. And so a lot of these companies are not doing that because it costs money. Mm -hmm. So uh, we learned uh, from talking to these co-packers, especially when I'm not gonna, Put any names but we sat down and i remember sitting down with with this person and and i remember looking at a cabinet of they were so proud of all the companies that they were co-packing for and i recognize a bunch of them because i've seen them at you know at this very famous story and, and if you guys if any of you guys are from la you know air one everyone is the epicenter oh uh, air one is <laughs> <laughs> i spent so, way too much time and money there so i recognize a bunch of the, the, the products and, uh, and they said to me, uh, the lady, I, I asked her, well, 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 after you're done, so let's say you receive your, let you, let's say you receive the, the product from, from X country, I don't know, you receive the cacao from Peru. You get it, it's a certified farm. What happens then? Oh, so we receive it and then we take a sample and then we put it away. And then in case there's a problem and our customer comes or there's a lawsuit or anything, we'll pull it out and we'll test it just in case. But uh, we, so far we haven't had any issues. So wait, are you telling me that you're, you're getting it from Peru, you're getting it into your company, you're not checking to see if there's any heavy metals, if there's any mold, if there's any, no, 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 we haven't had an issue so far. And so, and, and we don't really test unless you want it. If you want, if you really want to test it, then we'll send it to the lab and test it. But we haven't had any of our clients request that. Because most and, clients don't know that there's cadmium and cacao or something oh, like that, right? That's a problem. So yeah. I started from, from sourcing, I started to realize that there, there's certain things and certain, certain superfoods that there, there's a big problem with. For example, um, um, yeah, cacao, there's a big problem with cadmium. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants ceremonial uh, cacao from Peru because that's where the, the best cacao comes from. But when we were sourcing for cacao in Peru, we couldn't find a farm that didn't have high amounts of cadmium. 
-hmm. And that's a neurotoxin. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a, a less known heavy metal. Everyone knows mercury, everyone knows lead, but cadmium, uh, it's a problem. And so uh, we ended up going with a, a, a small farm in the Dominican Republic that mm -hmm. was very clean. And so, um, and so in, in, that, that was a problem with a lot of the superfoods and we started to realize, wow, this is something that it's a problem because a lot of these companies are not testing for 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 any impurities and um and even if they do test even if they do have a lab in in, in the co-packing company it's it's their own lab so so to me it was important that also in addition to be sent out to the lab that it wasn't a lab that is owned by the manufacturer itself mm -hmm. it's a lab it's a third-party lab somebody mm -hmm. else another company outside of of, of of payroll and so uh, uh, so we found the perfect manufacturer that had a third party lab that was tested everything because it's important that whatever you're getting your, 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 your uh, product or your, your, your ingredient from, that it gets tested when it arrives because you don't know what happened during transit. Yeah. You don't know what happened. You don't know if there's, 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 there's someone manhandled you or your package or what, but you don't know what happened. You got to test it. And then when it's tested before it goes into production to be tested, I mean, it has to be tested. You don't know, you don't even know if, yes, there's a certification that's coming from uh, India for your turmeric and it's certified organic, but you don't know if you're getting the, the, the turmeric that you asked for. You don't know what it, what's in it. You got to test it. You got to make sure that there's no pesticide. You got to test it that it's actually turmeric, that you're not getting another, um, because that's a problem too, that you're, they're not switching your stuff and giving you something else. And so, so that's, a, that, that, that's something that, that we are, we test and test and test and want to make sure that everything is, it's because I would, it would hurt my part if, if any of my products had um, mercury or had high levels of mold because, because <laughs> it, it was a problem for me. That's, that's one of the reasons why I was sick. I had, I mean, I was, I was swimming in glyphosate in pesticides, I was swimming in heavy metals. And so, so to me, that's important that, 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 that you, you don't introduce any more toxins because mm -hmm. you got to introduce nutrients, not toxins. I want to go into the formulations because <clears throat> candidly, your blog is extremely detailed <laughs> and it, it's, you guys go into a lot of detail about the nutrients and uh, just, even getting in detail about the neurotransmitters and their effects about it. And, and it's, it's amazing what you're doing. The formulations, how do you come up with these? Ingrid, is this largely based on your experience or is this like, there's so many different good formulations here. Talk me through how you come up with those. So those started uh, because I started to see results for myself. So I was the first guinea pig. I wanted to make sure that the formulations I was uh, putting out there are actually work. And uh, that's those formulations, especially the antioxidant one. Um, that one, I drank every single day for, I don't know, probably a year. <laughs> and Were you consuming anything else but smoothies during this time? Or was it predominantly? Uh, so, so here it goes. So when I started doing my uh, my when I started with the smoothies, that was my meal replacement. I was mm -hmm. looking for a nutrient dense breakfast mm -hmm. that because putting all those ingredients into a bowl, there's no way you were going to be, you're going to be able yeah. to finish that. Those are a lot of ingredients. And uh, I wanted to sort of uh, help my body be able to absorb them, uh, help my, 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 my body break them down, blend them. And so uh, that's the only way I could find that I could hide, a, hydrate my body, introduce fiber into my diet because I was reading something that the, the, the majority of, of, of the intake of fiber that people are, are taking today, it comes from bread. Yeah, Their course. fiber comes from bread. Mm -hmm. And so and it's one of those things where, where prebiotics, which is a, a form of, of fiber, you need that for your gut. That's the food for your microbiome. That's what your microbiome eats. But it needs to be 
diverse because if you don't diverse your your diet is not a nutrient there's no nutrient diversity there's no way your microbiome will be diverse and the more diverse your microbiome is the healthier and the the the, the more um the more energy you're gonna have it's it's, it's all about the diversity of your microbiome mm -hmm. and so, so um yeah so i wanted so how do i introduce first of all i love ice cream that's my weakness so i thought how do i make an you ice and me cream? both by the way yeah <laughs> awesome. oh, I so, much. so how do i make an ice cream like dessert because i don't have a sweet tooth mm -hmm. that has nutrient density and so, and what are the things that the, the, the sad American or diet or, or the standard American diet is, is lacking, right? And so, uh, if there's is it fiber, polyphenols, antioxidants, it's, and also, also I read that the, the, just like bread, people are not consuming antioxidants and the only antioxidants that people consume is from coffee. Not surprised. Right? So, so how do you make, how do you introduce more antioxidants? How do you, how do you introduce more uh, um, nutrients into, uh, in, in, because breakfast, to me, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Mm -hmm. you're, you're fasting for, I don't know how many hours that you're sleeping. And then when you wake up, it's, it's, you need to give your body the constituents and the, 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 you need to give your body the, the ingredients that it needs to start because there's chemical reactions happening every millisecond of the day. And so um, for that, your body needs ingredients. It's not gonna get it out of the air, right? You need to give your body this, this constituents. And so um, I was giving, um, so that's, that's how the, my formulation started um, with myself and, um, and each one, is was one of the, the I mean I focus on the five things that people basically those five things that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. which is cognitive decline, oxidative stress, gut dysbiosis, and low energy, those are the things that make people premature age. That's mm -hmm. it. It's cause of premature aging. And premature aging is not only gonna show in your skin, but it also affects your organs. Your organs are gonna get older sooner. So when I was having gut issues, I was started when I was 28 years old. I swear I could tell you that if you would have asked me how old are you, I was feeling like I was 80. Like mm -hmm. I was like a slug. I couldn't really like move. I was feeling heavy. I was feeling, I was feeling like my, my, it, the, I was feeling like I was carrying a bunch of rocks. It's just mm -hmm. carrying, carrying. It's just feeling like I was about to go into a, a convalescent center. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how do you tackle that? And, and so, and it, those are the five things that I focused on. And so those formulations, it's uh, finding each superfood, each one of those nutrient dense foods, because, um, you know, you have uh, medicinal mushrooms that are, that, that are packed with other nutrients that are packed with antioxidants that are packed mm -hmm. with polyphenols that are packed with polysaccharides that are packed with, with all these uh, chemicals that, uh, that, that, that compounds that will help enhance your, your brain, will help enhance your, lower your inflammation, your, increase your immune system. And so I wanted to, um, the, the way they came together is through, through finding the synergistic uh, balance in between all those superfoods and um, zooming in into each of the uh, constituents that has been, you know, each of those ingredients that have been known to work for thousands of years in, in, in dif different types of medicine, like Chinese, Ayurveda, and Aztec. And so each one was born that way. Mm. Yeah. So the product line right now is, is smoothie based. Are you guys looking at potentially diversifying away from smoothies or is it predominantly focusing on these amazing meal replacement packs, which I'm going to carry with me everywhere? Um, over the next couple of months, so to speak? Um, I think that we would be doing a disservice to our mission if we didn't expand our product line, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Um, but, you know, we are a very new company and since launching, uh, the world has changed dramatically. And yeah. so what we want to make sure we're doing is listening to what people want and what people need and adjusting accordingly. Um, 
and and we know now and we know that this recession is going to impact people's lives in a very big way and for a very long time and so mm -hmm. it's our responsibility to make sure that we are able to support as many people as possible um, and finding creative innovative ways to do that is going to in part uh, demand a more diversified product line mm -hmm. than, than this. Um, it takes time, as you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I do know <laughs> quite well. So I, I would love to just hear, like, let's say all of this muck that is in the world right now went away, with that muck being a virus in particular, um, and like the veil was lifted, we're all able to travel again. If you can project out sort of where, where do you want the future of Two Soul to go um, over the next couple of years? I would love to hear more about that. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that we have to, so our mission really is making health simple, easy, enjoyable. You shouldn't have to research. You shouldn't be confused. You shouldn't have all these things standing in the way. Basically, let's not make excuses. Let's make products that make it so easy for people to be healthy that they'd be crazy not to. I mean, that's really what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and so I think that this is a big wake up call in terms of uh, personal responsibility, preventative health, um, you know, awareness of our own ability to to control really our lives. And I think that, you know, as, as we don't necessarily have the capacity to support, I mean, America, especially, let's be honest, is going down an extremely unhealthy trajectory, right? We yeah. don't take care of ourselves. We are, I, I don't like the word, but we're morbidly obese. I mean, mm -hmm. the majority. So, so our, we, our system can't support that. And we can yeah. keep, creating these initiatives and these policies and you know having a partisan debate about it but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day we need to take control of our health so I think what we always want to make sure that we're doing is providing the easiest simplest most enjoyable way to do that and whether that's you know movement whether that's education in some capacity whether that's more sustenance on on top of the smoothies you know there's a million things that we need on a daily basis mm -hmm. whether that's you know literature um cleaning products any anything that you come in contact with every day we can make conscious decisions to make it a little bit better so mm -hmm. i think where the need where those needs aren't being met and people are still experiencing pain points there's plenty of opportunity for us to try and come in and do it a little bit better, take less shortcuts, and hopefully as consumer consciousness and demand continues to move in the direction of awareness of health and wellness and the importance of it, um, that that's going to impact uh, businesses in a much way and so i don't know that's exciting to me i can list a million products now that i'd love to launch but <laughs> it's gonna take time <laughs> right uh, now we're right now we're getting it to people we're asking you to make one do one thing a day that takes you one minute a day mm -hmm. right we want to be cognizant of anything else that we ask of people that we provide to people it's not going to take you five minutes it's going to take you one minute and it's going to mm -hmm. be easy and you're never going to have to think about it again it's going to become a routine the direction I would say of what we're trying to accomplish. Making health easy. This is amazing. Alana Ingrid, this has been incredible. I want to transition now just cognizant of time to the final three questions. And since we have both of you, maybe both of you can chime in on answers uh, here, but what book has most significantly impacted your life? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I think we're both massive bookworms. 
uh, me, awesome. me too. So somebody asked me this question. I was like, okay, I'm going to steal the question and it's going to take me a while to answer this. Oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, whew, I, don't know. <laughs> I have so many books in mind. I uh, have, I know I'll, I'll limit my response, but I have three books that live on my coffee table and I look at them daily. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Marcus Aurelius is one of them, Meditations. Um, is I have it probably, right behind me in the bookshelf over there. It's falling apart, my copy. It's time for a new one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that, I mean, it's so powerful. And I think now is the time that we really, I mean, all things considered, need to, to get back to the awareness of our own control over our own thoughts about uh, you know the fact that we do things because of, we should in a perfect world <laughs> we'll go back to my perfect world we should do things because they're just the right things to do we don't mm. have to look for approval we don't have to look for other people it's just do do things correctly and and don't do it predicated on what someone else is going to think or say or believe and we're being watched and policed and you know putting our entire personal lives in public and that's not for ourselves <laughs> quite frankly that's not that's not be, for any reason that's natural right that's not that's not you know, a fulfilling existence. So I just love it because it helps bring you back to, okay, if you did something good for someone, that's it. There's nothing else. There's no expectation. There's no judgment. There's no approval. There's no nothing. It's just the right thing to do. Um, and also just, you know, you're in charge of your thoughts. So all this roller coaster of what's happening day to day, it's nature. It's, it's going to happen. But mm -hmm. you have everything you need to be living a happy existence you know <laughs> that's, a, that's one book <laughs> i'll spare you the other one. Oh, I, I think you left a cliffhanger for the listener so yeah, you, you need to at least tell us the other two um i well okay um awareness <laughs> i'm like looking who do i talk uh awareness uh by anthony Demello. have you read this book i have not but it sounds like something <laughs> i'll add soon Oh my gosh, do you want me to grab it? It's, it's amazing. It just talks a lot about, um, how can I say? It's kind of, it's kind of similar to Stoic philosophy in, in certain ways. It's a lot about, um, you know, your existence and your control over your existence and your thought patterns. And it pulls a bit from Buddhism in the sense of like, there's the me and there's the I, and there has to be a, we're kind of more vessels than we are the actual human embod like mm -hmm. we're embodying these human figures but but things are going to happen they're going to pass through and mm -hmm. we'll continue and it's our responsibility to not react but to experience it and to open our eyes and to see everything that's happening around us and like Ingrid was talking about earlier, it's a lot about unlearning. It's about, um, you know, we're constructed in these ways where we're looking for patterns and we're looking for comfort. And it's just biology. It's efficient to do that. And that's how we're wired uh, mm -hmm. for survival. But, but our job now, given everything happening around us and the world we live in is really to, to consciously deconstruct that and question it and challenge it and say, mm -hmm. okay, this is happening there's something we can do about it it's mm -hmm. not a passive existence that's more that one um that's so, right but i love that book <laughs> ingrid we've given you some time to think about this now yes, I have so many. okay okay i have books that really the first book that that really that really impacted me and and this is one of the I, I usually gift it. I buy it in bulk and gift it to people. It's a small essay by Seneca. It's called On the Shortness of Life. It's only mm -hmm. 60, 60 pages, but it was written in 49 AD. 
And it's, it, when, you, when you read that book, it feels like it was written right now because it gives you the idea that people have not changed, right? We think about like, oh, well, people today, it's social media, people today, and this. No, 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 no. It's still the same thing. People are still complaining of, of not having enough time, right? Mm-hmm. And people are complaining of, 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 of the same things that we're complaining today. And so I, if, if you haven't read the book on the shortness of life, it will open your eyes into being more conscious about your time and who you give your time a way to because mm-hmm. it's, it's it's if i ask you for twenty thousand dollars right now boomer you're gonna be like uh uh no right <laughs> if I ask you for but if, but if i ask you for um three hours of your time you're gonna be like sure yeah why not yeah let's 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 do it but it's it's it's, it's, it's part of that thing where like time your time has no no there's there's it doesn't have there's no monetary uh, value in your time, like it's 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 your life. You're giving away uh, hours to people, to certain people. Yeah. Sometimes you want to hang out with people, and like you're still doing it because you just want a piece, or you you want to uh, you're just giving it away. But it's one of those things that I learned where like, wow, I'm very conscious about who I give my time to and where I spend my time. And so it's one of those books that you're like, wow, you're gonna be like blown away because people back then were still complaining about that. And so. Uh, it's a great book and I like him because he's like sort of like a um, I like I like him as a character he's just this grumpy man and and but but I really like the way he, he writes uh, mm-hmm. another book is uh, A Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Franco oh such a good book yeah that book is a must read by mm-hmm. everyone because that's one of the things that I, I realize uh, when I started my health journey, it's, it's finding that meaning, right? Finding that meaning to be able to continue with life and love life. To learn how to love life is to find a meaning. And so uh, that's one of the things that people are struggling with, not only health uh, wise, but, but it's like the meaning to get you there. So mm-hmm. find that meaning. And how do you find that meaning? Oh. Another one that I like uh, is, is, um, your brain of oh, no that's another one it's a health book if you want to read it on the side it's just one of those books where like you it's called your brain on parasites okay interesting and i'll have to check that out such a great book because it's it, it sometimes it, i'm in such control of my health but when i read that book i'm like well, you know what sometimes they have, have no control sometimes we're gonna get parasites that are gonna be controlling every move that we do or we're controlling mm-hmm. the that we like i could go into detail that's for another podcast but mm-hmm. you could Go into detail what these parasites do in your brain, and 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 like if you have different um, uh, cravings for food, or if you if you you like to leave your life on edge, maybe there's a parasite in your brain that is telling yeah. you to live on edge. Um, and uh, but uh, another book I like uh, for that that really this is more of a nerdy book. Uh, I love this book because it's it's from the eighties. You're speaking but, to a nerd, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, good, good. So if you want to learn about in detail, in a, it's very, very well written and it's very easy to understand uh, about how DNA works and uh, the pirates of, it's called the pirates of the cell. Mm-hmm. And it's a great book to read now. I mean, I read it a, a, a few years ago, but it's, I, I'm rereading it now again because of what's happening with the coronavirus. But uh, it's called the pirates of the cell. And it's basically how the viruses work inside of your cells and what they do inside and in detail how do they get in how do, how do it's just it's just a great book to learn more, more about like your, your your how your dna gets affected in your cells and the, the, the viruses that go inside of your cells that's such a great title pirates of the cell it is. Um, one more book that i love if you have trouble sleeping <laughs> why we sleep by matthew walker it's a great read great book, great book. Uh, top trick for enhancing focus uh, top for enhancing focus? Yeah. What's your What's your guys' top trick for enhancing focus? Oh, okay. Well, this is a, a, a little bit of a, it's a big one. Well, the first one is uh, uh, Alliance Man. I take, uh, I take it in powder form. I take it in tinctures. I love, uh, there's a company called uh, Wild Kingdom that makes mm-hmm. one of the best Alliance Man tinctures. Uh, he's a forager, so he forages. He, make, he makes it in small batches, batches in here in L.A., but um, 
that is good to boost your acetylcholine. And I know it works a hundred percent because I take it before sleep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when you are sleeping, when you're, when you're on REM, one of the neurotransmitters that's very abundant in your brain is acetylcholine. That's the reason why you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I like taking it before bedtime. I don't take it every day, but I take it when I want to have really good dreams. <laughs> dreams, mm -hmm. and I know I see the coins working because I get the best dreams. Mm -hmm. And so, and I take it in the mornings when I need to focus. My other one, my other go-to one, uh, which I have right here, is nicotine. Yeah, nicotine is such a good, uh, uh, such a good uh, antioxidant for the brain. It's been shown that. Mm -hmm. That, oh hey cheers yeah exactly i took it right before this podcast so <laughs> it's such a great it's such yeah. a great it's very taboo because people don't understand it but please like go research nicotine mm -hmm. uh, it's in, in small doses you take one milligram it's, mm -hmm. it's an amazing antioxidant for the brain it's been shown to help people with uh, uh alzheimer's uh actually there's a study that shows that people that that smoke cigarettes um have uh don't really show uh they don't really show uh cognitive decline that's because yeah. of the nicotine obviously don't smoke cigarettes because it's of chemicals and it will ruin your lungs and probably will, will kill you but um but isolated nicotine it's, mm. it's I, I love it absolutely yeah alana gosh um so okay so i i'm one of those people that I can sit and, and work uninterrupted and forget to eat. I mean, it's just the way I'm wired. So my, my issue is less so with focus and more with unplugging. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, Ingrid used to have to, when we'd work together, she'd be like, you need to stop and eat something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done, I'm almost done. <laughs> Cause I just, I'm just wired that way. We're all biologically different. So um, I don't know, there was a time I mean, obviously, I drink our banana smoothies on a day that I have to be a little bit smarter just because I have, I have that one today. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> done all the things. And I, I went through a phase of popping some Makuna Purians in there mm -hmm. uh, just because we accidentally bought way too much and couldn't use it. And now I have three, <laughs> three pounds sitting in my cabinet. So I was like, I oh, may as well just experiment. Uh, but, but no, there, that, beyond that, nothing. I mean, my biggest issue is trying to unplug and go to sleep. And for that, I've tried hypnosis. I've tried meditation. I've tried, you know, you name it. Um, mm -hmm. It's I am working on constantly. But focus, okay. you know, it's inertia. It just keeps moving. <laughs> Last question before we find out where, well, before we tell everybody where to find you, uh, is what excites you most about the health world right now? This is a tough question, especially given the period, but. Uh, you know, when it, whatever's happening right now with, 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 uh, with COVID-19, I see a silver lining. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people being interested in, in their bodies and being interested in, in the immunity. And that actually makes me really happy because a lot of my friends that were not interested in listening to me, all of a sudden are calling me. It's like, okay, what are your top supplements? What should I do? What should I take? What should I, and what should I eat? And it makes me really happy that they're, they're, it's opening a lot of people's eyes into seeing the importance of immunity. And it's not, it's, it's not, it's something that isn't, you're not going to do for a month or you're, you're not going to do for two months and then forget about it and go on with your life after this. I, I hope that it sticks. And if, I hope that it becomes an every, a part of their everyday routine to be conscious mm -hmm. about immunity, to be conscious about like, what they're going to put in your mouth every single day because everything that you put in your mouth um, will affect you in some way or another. And, um, and so I, that is actually exciting me to see people care more and be people more, more aware of, 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 of their bodies. And uh, I hope that it sticks and... Uh, I'm happy about that. Amazing. Lana? I mean, I, I completely second that. I think it's amazing to, to, to try and regain control over our own health. Um, my, I'm very excited, hopefully, and hopeful, and 
maybe overly optimistic about uh, shifts in demand affecting shifts in agricultural practices. Like, yeah. <laughs> technical about it, but the more we learn about what Ingrid's talking about, the more it's going to dovetail into okay, now people are demanding organic. Now people are demanding, you know, even biodynamic at yeah. the point where organic proves insufficient. And there are mm. new, there are new. Uh, registrations that are going to come for regenerative agriculture for you know sustainable agriculture and and all these shifts in consumer demands are going to finally help move the needle in terms of what farmers do on a day-to-day -day basis because yeah. they're not in charge right? they can't grow something if no one wants it so yeah. it has to be a shift in demand before and a shift in I'm not going to get into government, but, but the way that we handle agriculture as a nation and hopefully with, you know, that's what I'm very excited about. And I also love, I wore a mask and all, but went to a nursery the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, how is the nursery open? It's because all these people are starting to plant their own food in their backyard. Yeah. What an idea. I mean, we could have been doing this forever. We wouldn't have to go to the market and wear gloves and masks. We could just you know, water our plants a little bit more frequently and feed ourselves. So I think that's also some sort of silver lining through it. Um, and, you know, just as technology is getting more advanced, we're able to grow better food in better ways. Mm -hmm. um, not so much on the GMO side, but in terms of, you know, harvesting and plant cycles and fixing nitrogen and all the things that are going to heal the soil and earth uh, is really exciting. And it's coming oh. into pop culture i mean it's coming to netflix it's coming to all these places where you know when you're done watching your lion tiger king show you can like watch <laughs> about soil yeah <laughs> which nobody should spend six hours watching that <laughs> but, but they do <laughs> yeah of course a lot of people do apparently but well yeah. said where can people find out more about tussle our website is tussolewellness.com um, T U S O L wellness. And then the Instagram is tusolwellness.com. And we're just Ingrid at and Alana at Tusol Wellness. It's all two of us running the company. So you'll find one of us either on Instagram or email if you'd like. Amazing. And the show notes for this one, guys, with all of those links mentioned are going to be at decodingsuperhuman.com slash Tusol. Ingrid, Alana, You've been very generous with your time. I love your products, so I'm going to rave about them for everybody, but thank you so much. Thank you. It's been thank fun. Thank you. To all the superhumans listening out there, have an epic day. <laughs>